Did you know that this is a club and you and I are not in this club? But boy, those that are in this club, they play by a different set of rules and they keep playing until they get caught and then they change the rules just a little bit. Oh my goodness, who could know? Certainly, everything is on the up and up. Well, I think it's time to talk about this just in an ongoing series of abuses coming up. I'm Lynette Zhang, Chief Market Analyst here at ITM Trading, a full service physical gold and silver dealer, but specializing in custom strategies that puts your goals first. Now we already know what the goal of the whole, this whole transition is, which is a transfer of wealth. But you know, put your goals first for a change, because if you're expecting the government or the central bank to do that, you are in for a very rude awakening. So what's happening? I'm gonna take you just a teeny bit down memory lane. Remember when the Fed presidents were selling stocks and of course they're sitting there determining who's gonna win and who's gonna lose. And then, oh, well, they changed some of the ethics laws because apparently they didn't really think they needed to be particularly ethical before that. And then here you go, Fed officials trade stock in companies, their agencies oversee. Hidden records show thousands of senior executive branch employees own shares of companies whose fates were directly affected by their employer's actions, a Wall Street and Journal investigation found. Aren't you shocked? And what's the latest? Oh my goodness, dozens of federal judges had financial conflicts. Hmm, isn't that interesting? So what are we seeing in all of these, but seriously, hidden interests that you and I don't know about? And by the way, you don't even elect the, the uh, judges. A Wall Street Journal investigation found that 152 federal judges around the nation have violated U.S. law and judicial ethics by overseeing 1,076 court cases involving companies in which they or their family owned stock. How shocked are you? Now, Clarence Thomas brought this more to the fore. But even so, more, most federal employees faced more oversight than Clarence Thomas and the Supreme Court. Ethics rules at U.S. agencies limit gifts and require disclosure. Hmm. But technically, all federal employees across the three branches of government are subject to the 1978 Ethics in Government Act because they have to put these into act. We certainly know these government officials. I don't know where their ethics are, but still the consequences for ethical lapses vary widely. Members of Congress can be voted out of office. Executive branch workers face oversight ethics officers and Supreme Court justices operate with no outside oversight. So how do you feel about this? Seriously, how do you feel? Because the reality is, is the higher up you are, the more you should be accountable because you have more power to do harm. And particularly when we're looking at the Supreme Court, they have been doing a lot of harm by reducing our rights, the public rights, and they have no oversight. There were a number of coins that actually made it out of the mint, 1933 coins that made it out of the mint. Now, one of those coins ended up in, they think, King Farouk's hands. And a number of years ago, actually, I think it was 2002 or 2003, uh, an agent for the family that was holding that coin negotiated with our government that made it legal tender. It's a $20 gold piece like this, just a different date, made it legal tender. And then they were able to sell the coin for, I think it was like eight and a half million, including fees, something like that, 
with some of the profits going to the U.S. government and the balance of the profits going to the family. A number of years later, uh, after a jeweler died, uh, they opened up his safe deposit box and guess what? They found 10 more of the 1933s. The family, rather than getting a negotiator like King Farouk's family did, the family sent the coins to the mint for authentication. They didn't get them back. There are lots of court cases, but ultimately the U.S. Supreme Court will not take up the case involving ownership of 10 1933 St. Gaudens $20 double eagles, meaning the coins will remain in the property of the federal government. Well, what we're talking about here are not 1933 coins, but they are in the collectible category. According to the Bank for International Settlements, physical gold in your possession is not subject to geopolitical risk and runs no counterparty risk. I don't have 1933s that are at risk. I have other dates. There are many more of those out there, but there's still a finite amount. But like they did back in 1933, where they wrote the laws that enabled those that understood them to hold on to their goals or families to negotiate maintaining it many, many years later. For me, with my uncle and his two safes packed with pre-1933 $20 gold coins, that's where I put my money and hold my wealth. It's a true supply and demand market. It levels the playing field. So if you haven't done this yet, you want to make sure that you watch last week's video on the hidden dangers behind the debt crisis and start your gold and silver strategy. Put your goals first. If you need some help defining your goals, we're here to be of service. So click that Calendly link below and give us a call. Set up a time to talk to one of our consultants because physical gold and silver in your possession is your wealth shield. Anything that's in fiat, stocks, bonds, annuities, ETFs, cash, any of that, they are intentionally destroying what little teeny bit is left in the purchasing power. And this is a con game. It's only public confidence is the only level of confidence left. You want to be in real money like the central banks are doing when the public loses, ultimately loses that last little bit of confidence. So if you haven't already, please make sure you subscribe. If you like this, give us a thumbs up, leave us a comment, share, share, share. The playing field is not level. This levels it. This levels it. And until next we meet, please be safe out there. Bye-bye.